after hitting up 10 fly-by-night cities over the past year, it's nice to finally come to a real fucking town! Take it all in, boys. Maybe take some, maybe take some notes if you ever want to do a report on history. You think Paul Revere rode through the filthy streets of Philly? They would have thrown batteries at him. <laughs> Water. Cal, uh, let me tell you, Colorado, beautiful state, but the only reason people go there is to do drugs. It is a picturesque crack den. John F. Kennedy was born down the street in Brookline, Mass. He visited Grant's hometown and they fucking shot him. Don't boo me, boo Grant. Grant was the second shooter. And Matthew's from New Jersey. <laughs> That's the joke. <laughs> right there. I could just put a period on that. <laughs> New Jersey is <laughs> not him. He was born that way. That is a, New Jersey is a state that not only couldn't hold Massachusetts jockstrap, it is a state that smells like a jockstrap. <laughs> Speaking of smells, you might be wondering, fellas, what that smell in the air is. Smell of championship sports teams, Joe. It's the smell of a hot coffee from Dunkies on a brisk fall day. And most importantly to me, it's the smell of home. Get it in there. How's everybody doing tonight? Shocker. How many people are attending their first Glass Cannon Live tonight? Oh! Well, laddie da let me pop my harpoon. <laughs> How many people are attending their last Glass Cannon Live? <laughs> Just this person. Security. <laughs> you know, if you hop on the T right outside here on Com Ave, take it 16 stops down the road, you get to my alma mater, Boston College. Any eagles in the audience, huh? For boss, no. That seems like an intelligent crowd. It's a hard school to get into, Joe. You wouldn't understand. I thought that about Columbia until you got into it. <laughs> and I was like, can you, oh. cut, can you cut his mic? <laughs> Between 1996 and 2000, your old buddy Troy walked these very streets, peed. In these very streets. <laughs> Was cited for peeing in these very streets. Yes. <laughs> That's a public record. <laughs> and I walked by this very club many a night to see all those hot co-eds dressed to the nines waiting in line. And I always felt like an outsider. Aww. I, always felt like, I wasn't a big club guy, but I felt like those are the cool kids and not your old pal Troy. I was an outsider looking in. Not tonight. Because... Tonight is Glass Cannon Live! Yeah! And all of those co-eds are dead! <laughs> or selling themselves on the street! Matthew killed them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the string of serial murders. It's always the one you least expect, I'm telling you. I just noticed there's five delicious looking drinks here. You're welcome. Thank you, madam. <laughs> Before I get to the introductions, two of these dum-dums had birthday this week. I don't know if you know this. That's right, one hit puberty and one hit menopause. Let's give it up for Matthew and Skid, huh? Now, I, I got you both presents uh, to oh. celebrate. Uh, in... In truth, no, they already have plenty of that. Uh, in truth, it's the same present I've given you for the last five years. Success you've never dreamed of. Here you go. Is this one of those presents that, go. like, you. you know, I you. promised to give my wife but never have actually bought? I don't need to know about your failing marriage, Matthew. <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> Let's go around the horn and meet these jerks, though, huh? Give it up for Mr. Sweet 16, Matthew Capitacasa! <laughs> You walk around here with your little beard, your little jacket, your olive oil voice, and your giddy charm. Giddy charm. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing you haven't beat up yet in this city. Because you walk around with the air of someone that thinks that they're better than everybody else. That's not true at all. And people get beat up in this town for that. So I Unless look forward... they're in Cambridge. They can go to Cambridge and they'll fit right in. Yes, there you... <laughs> We'll have to do the next one in Cambridge, just to keep you safe. I love this city. I love how the bars close at like 10.30 at night. <laughs> Perfect for you. That is right up your alley. That is. I'm so overwhelmed by all these beers. Uh, did you get to go to the North End and have some gabagool? I wanted to. We talked about it. Some shmoo, you know? <laughs> Guys, give it up for Grant Berger. I don't yeah. know if you know my friend Grant. Grant, I've decided I'm not going to be mean to you tonight. Really? Yep. No. Because even though you're nine feet tall and 400 pounds of stupid, you're very sensitive. I am. I am. <laughs> One's physical size does not equal the size of their feelings. Your feelings, not unlike your comically disproportionate genitals, are very, very small. <laughs> and I would not deign to hurt them in public again in my hometown of all places. Just promise me you'll keep Matthew safe later. When... <laughs> I have this entire romantic weekend we spent together. You and Matthew? Yeah. We had a great time. We got in our robes. I saw the matching robes. Uh, uh, we, we, we got to go to an exercise class together. We walked through the Boston Commons. It was gorgeous. Beacon Hill? I had a great time, Matthew. This I had a great time, Grant. This is why Matthew's marriage is suffering. <laughs> These little road trips he takes with Grant. <laughs> Honey, it's for the company. <laughs> Let's have three cheers for Skidmar, folks. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! That's two and a half more cheers than you deserve. <laughs> but I'm in a giving mood. How are you, old son of a gun? I'm good. I, uh, I also, like you, have roots in Massachusetts. I... I uh, I'm a proud recent graduate of the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Uh, you were a 19th year senior, right? Yes, I was a 19th year senior. I was taking two credits a year. Uh, and uh, no, I used to spend a lot of time, like you, down on Com Ave. Uh, when, right after I got out of college, my girlfriend at the time uh, was going to BU, and uh, she lived down here, and I would walk by here all the time. But it's funny because when I come down here now, like all my memories are mixed up between my actual memories and Fallout 4. <laughs> so it's like, I think, yeah, all right, we'll go over to T. Anthony's, get some pizza, and it's like, but I think there's a death claw working the counter, so I better bring a fat boy or two to make sure we're all right. Yeah, Fenway looks a lot different uh, yeah, in Fallout. Yeah. Does here, you're, uh, you're another year older, do you feel any wiser? No, not really. No. I, I have to be the least wise person ever because just, just judging from my personal perception, I never notice anything. Like, I'm lucky I have Samantha with me because she spots everything and I spot nothing. <laughs> Skid, you are wearing that beautiful tweed jacket, though. Thank you. you look yes. very wise. Does it have the leather... Uh, no, I wanted the leather... No. You can just, you know... Rip a hole in it. Rip a hole I in could. it. That's true. Folks, he's drunk. He's Irish. If he were handsome and talented, you would think he was local. Give it up for Joe O'Brien. I love Boston. Boston Joe. I can't help it, Troy. I, I can't help it. <laughs> the old Boston cream donut. How are you? I, uh, I am fantastic, Troy. Why? Because Tell me why in, de in great detail. Because I had an orange for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and four beers. I'm ready to go! As a native Philadelphian, what is, what's it like to visit a city that's superior in every single way? You see, that's not true, but the thing is... No! Let's go over the facts. Better sports teams. 
Obviously, better accents. People are real tough instead of fake tough. Oh. oh, are you going to North Philly and then tell me about real tough? <laughs> and for you will get your ass kicked in two <laughs> seconds with your cocky ass attitude and your boss of Red Sox hat. Yeah. Get you want to go right now? I'm not even kidding. Like, you'll get murdered. <laughs> yeah. Not like somebody will beat you up, like, you'll get shot. Doesn't count if they have guns. <laughs> we use our fists here on the mean streets of Boston. <laughs> And occasionally box cutters. But it's so funny. It's so funny because we've got we came here for your bachelor party a, a few years ago, and we Joe was up here and he embraced Boston so completely, oh, yeah. and like he's like I'm gonna and he wore like a, a Red Sox cap and everything, and it was so funny because he got drunk and he was completely indistinguishable from everyone walking the streets <laughs> in the city, and so we started calling him Boston Joe, and it was the funniest thing in the world. He transforms into another personality. It's well, amazing. you know, I have tried to. Did you lose a bet? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I've tried so hard to, since meeting this guy to not like Boston because he just shits on your city all the time. And so I'm like, I'm trying to find, find ways to shit on Boston. And then I'm here, and everybody looks like my cousin, yeah. and yeah. every <laughs> bar is amazing, and I'm just like. Damn it! Like, it's just too much fun. It's too much fun. Fenway's the most amazing goddamn baseball park in the world. I can't, I can't help it. It's... Look at him shamelessly playing to the audience. That's, I'm just saying the sad truth. I want to hate it, Matthew, because Troy's the worst. But I can't bring myself to do it. It's too, it feels like home. It's like a second home. <laughs> well, Boston loves you, Joe, and you're welcome here anytime. Thanks, buddy. Maybe a little class will rub off on you. I'm gonna open one of these aluminum bottles that look like they came right out of Fenway Park! Yeah! I want the green ones like they have during St. Patrick's Day. Those are great. Uh, let me ask you this. Anybody in the crowd like hot breaking news? Uh, that didn't seem like everybody. Maybe I shouldn't drop this hot news about GCP Nation. I'll do it because I love you. Because Boston is the greatest city in the world. And because we sold out this show faster than any show on the tour. That's you. That's you guys. We're coming back in three months. Right here. We're coming back to the paradise. Saturday, February 29th, during PAX East. Get your tickets a week from Tuesday. It's happening. <laughs> to hell with other cities. <laughs> We're just playing Boston every month of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the big Boston tour. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing if we just did Boston like every other month. That would be great. <laughs> it's such an easy trip. We really should. <laughs> <laughs> Far more profitable yes. than our West Coast shows. <laughs> Did you guys get your red cap shirts? Show off the back, Troy. Get them before the season desists. <laughs> Please. We encourage you. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of ready to go. I am so ready. I'm, I'm ready. so excited. Woo! Stretch your dice rolling muscles and your improvisational sinews. Now remember the rules, you jerks out there. Fuck you! Get Especially this one. <laughs> Guy doesn't know any of the rules. Number one, don't send us any shots. shots. These are fine. These are fine. <laughs> and the second rule, you shut the fuck up when I'm talking. You can talk when Joe talks. <laughs> but don't ruin my video. <laughs> we lose money just doing these videos. Don't ruin them. <laughs> That is shouting out, sir! I will remove your VIP band. Now, I don't care that last call is obscenely early in this city. We're gonna party all night long and it starts right now. So crack over to Sam Adams, warm up the clam chowder, activate your fun drives, and let's take it to the recap. Really? Recap. Recap upgrade, I think. That was we pretty synergized good. this time. We synergized our departments. 
That is the least expensive heavy metal music we could buy. <laughs> and I think it rocks. <laughs> Everybody jump into your imagination spheres. This is your first Glass Cannon Live, your 10th, your last, or if you're not even here yet because there's a time fissure. This is the story so far. Our heroes have been fighting and barely surviving their way through an asylum, Briarstone Asylum, on Briarstone Isle, to be specific. An asylum in complete disarray from a recent patient uprising, and an asylum that seems to be caught in the middle of a rift between the real world and the dream world. Our heroes started this adventure not knowing anything about themselves, but recently found out they were brought here by a government official named Count Hazerton Lowell's the Fourth. They were brought here in exchange for letting this count have some one-on-one -on -one time with a patient named Oliver Zandalus. Praise, praise, praise. Words fail. Words fail. The very patient that you now know led the uprising in this fucking place. Okay. Count Bru don't you interrupt me. <laughs> Security! Go socks! I was gonna say, remove this drunk Irishman and they take like 15 people out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir, you're giving me an impossible uh, task. <laughs> it's the whole crowd, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the Count brought you here as amnesiacs and told the administrator, hey, hey, take these jerks. Keep no record of them and give Xandalus to me. I'll even throw in a copy of The Chain of Nights, a book that he had lent the administrator on his frequent stops to the asylum to visit Zandalus, as his interest in Zandalus grew. Why he took such an interest in Zandalus and what allure this Chain of Nights book had to the administrator, you do not know. But you do know that the Count's growing obsession with Zandalus is probably what led him to abandon his post, abandon his post in Versex County, which was brought Winter Klaxa here. Who's Winter Klaxa? She's a nun who came here to inquire after the Count's whereabouts. Unfortunately, she came right at the time that the asylum fell apart, and now she is the de facto spiritual leader of a group of survivors holed up in the asylum chapel. Praise Lord. Praise Lord! Praise, Lord. Praise them. You can say praise log, I'll, I'll allow that. But nothing else! There are hospital workers, there are patients, there are even some children holed up in this asylum with her. The four of you, Kartha Malasord, AKA Mrs. O'Lady. Hello. Oh yeah. Atticus Grimm, the incompetent. <laughs> Halster Price. Way to, way to sell it, Grant. And Aldo Casimir. The bomber. <laughs> the bomber. <laughs> they have been searching the asylum for clues as to what happened while also fighting through haunts, hideous monsters, as well as these followers of Zandalus let loose all over the asylum. Last session began with one such haunt, a hallway of blood that you trace back to an old woman who was sitting in a wheelchair, a gaping hole on her chest, spilling out blood that led to the floor, ran all the way to the other end of the hallway, and then defied gravity, filling the hallway floor to ceiling with blood. Eventually, you're able to neutralize the haunt with positive energy before finally destroying the haunt by giving Mrs. Freeling her medicine, shoving some heart medication pills down her throat. If you don't take your medicine, Mrs. Freeling, why your very heart will explode. Aldo heard in his head. In the middle of all that, Atticus the stupid jumped through a small hatch. Wasn't aware of that nickname. <laughs> when did that start? It's in my notes. It was when you were unconscious for stupidly yes. jumping through the hatch. <laughs> we shall call him Atticus the stupid to remind you that he is stupid. He jumped through a small hatch into a room full of three drugged out apostles and orpiment, Zandalus's followers, who almost killed Atticus were it not for his brave companions. 
No, were it not for the audience in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Were it not for the Nash. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> In the middle of the fight, Aldo opened a door into a room that was dark beyond recognition, somehow darker than the darkness that he was already in. We finished the session with there are a number of options lying before you on where to go next. There's a door in the room where you fought the apostles. There's the door to this dark room that Aldo discovered. And then there's this long hallway to the south where you already see one door in there. We also finished the session with the four of you leveling up. Yes! We gotta talk about third level. Let's talk about third level. Matthew, tell yeah. me about third level Mrs. O'Lady. I love What do you her. got? And make it good. Okay. Just imagine yeah. that you're performing in front of an audience. Okay. And you're naked. Why am I why am I imagining this? That'll make you less nervous, I think. It's also what I want. Oh. Maybe we should change the seating arrangement. I think you can't because I think the raw force of our combined sexualities would make the room explode. That's true, and there are fire codes. Matthew, tell us about your crappy character. Well, I got some cool thing. Cool, some cool things happened to me. Uh, I highly know. doubt it. Uh, why you're so mean? Um, so I got uh, because of my psychic investigator archetype. I got a. Are you even listening to me, Troy? Stop listening. No. <laughs> it's uh, Joe's turn. Joe, tell me about your character. <laughs> Honestly, this is how every one of our sessions goes. <laughs> That's true. Well, I got a, I became a psychic dabbler, and I got a phrenic pool. Ooh, a phrenic pool. I'd like to take a dip. <laughs> Me too, because I only get one point in that pool. Oh. <laughs> and I chose a phrenic amplification that can be only used with two points. So you'll see that next level. Right. <laughs> During our Boston show next November. Yeah. <laughs> what else? What else? Um, I got an, I got another spell, which we'll find more about find out more about later. Ooh, no one cares. Yeah, uh, thanks for that. And I also took a feat Ooh. called. Oh Dylan. yeah, everybody gets a new feat at third level. The drinks just keep flowing. Uh, the feat is called dilettante. Dilettante. Yes. You are quite the dilettante. How perfect. Thank you. Um, so. Basically, if I have two or more uh, ranks in five or more knowledge skills. You already lost me, man. I get a plus two on every single knowledge check. I get a plus two on my knowledge check. No, that's good. That's great. Yeah. We'll do that all off air whenever you want to use that spell. (laughs) This character was chosen for me. No, that's a great... I'm trying to play the character. That's a great spell for a live show experience. I, uh, I, I applaud you on your choice or feet whatever who cares Joe O'Brien Atticus Atticus the the bad character what did you do at third level oh clearly someone thinks I'm sleepy (laughs) this this is a giant vodka Red Bull yeah so that Boston Joe could go all night oh baby somebody's getting punched you better take your pills or else your heart will explode Uh, (laughs) seriously (laughs) Uh, let's see. Well, you guys know Wizard. It's not that exciting at low Maybe levels. they don't know Wizards. I got a feat. I took Spell Focus. <laughs> not that exciting. Classic. In D- what uh, school? Uh, in Illusion. Oh. In so my DCs like. that you'll beat anyway go up a little bit. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it, except I did get two new spells. Oh. One I'm so excited about because I know of its effectiveness from our own players in our other games. Mirror image. I could just see it too. Many Atticuses, like it just seems the type. Attic, Atticai. Uh, Attic, Atticai. I believe, yeah, it's many Atticai. Yes. Using the Latin declensions, and then I got this other spell, which I'm gonna t- talk about because I'll probably die before I can cast it, and uh, I love it so much. It's from Horror Adventures, I believe. Yeah, Horror Adventures. It's called Bone Shaker. Does anybody know this spell? You take control of anything that has a skeleton. 
So if it's living, Ooh. you deal damage to it like from its bones. <laughs> and if it's undead, you don't deal any damage to it, but you can control it like a puppet. You can make it move and stuff. Oh, you're making a move all right. That sounds yeah. fun. It's cool. It's cool. You get a save and stuff can happen, but I'm excited to bust it out. That's great. Yeah. All right. Um, Houster Price, you stick with War, War Priest or do the... Uh, Little do rogue the, dip. Do the mesmerist dip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went War Priest again, but I took a feat that wasn't like power attack or cleave or anything that was kind of normal. I'm actually kind of inspired by Colonel Luther going a little, little different. That's so, too bad. I also thought it made sense in this amnesiac, amnesiac starting point uh-huh. to have additional traits emerge as I remember things. So I took Harrowborn, which is a human trait, which allows me to add a plus one to my initiative bonus because I'm good at fortune telling. It doesn't make sense. Um, but more okay. flavorfully and more Grant Burgerly, I took Fate's Favored. What is that? Fate's Favored it. allows me to take an additional plus one on any luck bonuses I receive. Wow. Which means when I cast Divine Favor on myself, ka uh, so that's that's really big, and that's I took a new cool. spell, Sanctuary. Ooh. Oh, oh, great one, good, one. good one. I think it'll be really good, especially because it's a will save to keep the enemy from attacking, and with these opium-riddled Philadelphians attacking us, right? We have a really good chance of them failing that will save. But you know, if you, it, they'll shoot you otherwise. Uh, I got twenty bucks. He uses Sanctuary on himself first. Hundred <laughs> percent. No bet. No bet. No. <laughs> I won't take that. All right. Uh, what about Aldo Casimir, third level alchemist? Aldo Casimir, it, it's not super interesting, I guess, but I got uh, my bombs, instead of doing 1d6 plus 5, now do 2d6 plus 5. Oh! oh. That's big, That's man. That's pretty big. Uh, I also took, I also get a uh, feature called Swift Alchemy, so I can apply poison to a weapon as a move action. And uh, I took a feat. I, I was arguing between a couple of different things. One you'll see later. But the one I ended up taking is just extra bombs. So I got two extra bombs per day. Ooh. And by the way, I personally leveled up because I now have a new Novation soundboard. Be a lot quicker on the draw with those drops. You didn't earn enough XP for that. Throw it out. It's true. You cheated. And it's third party, too. As well. It's a third party. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Third level, and you all survived, except for Joe's original character that you spent a lot of time on. I love that bastard. I applaud you all. Well, I want you all to just imagine this scene. Lights come up on a bucket of leeches lying empty on the floor. Above on the wall is the holy symbol of Phrasma, the Lady of Graves, a single blue spiral. We've seen this room before. It's the room where we've seen Halster branded, leached, and tortured. Roughly hewn into the oaken door frame, high above the room are the words, those who endure. Musty odors waft through the open frame as well as the agonized wails of several people deeper in the chamber. If you were to listen long enough, you might be able to hear music in the howls, each utterance a note scrawled upon the sheet music of a grim conductor. A pernicious crack punctuates the aria of anguish. A cat of nine tails whips through the air to find purchase upon back flesh, besotted by boils and enervated by starvation. Thank you. Thank you. The drink is handed to the narrator of this, and he takes a sip. He doesn't like the drink. but he'll probably drink all of it because he has a problem. (laughs) (laughs) Pores erupt and skin ruptures. Blood, instead of gushing, seeps out of the fresh wounds. We see a close-up 
of Halster's face as he grimaces, sweat heavy on his brow. You're gonna bleed for a while, boy. At least till you have those visions again, that voice and those words tumble and echo through Halster's mind. Blood trickles down the cracks in the floor like a midsummer rain. Gently into the drain at the center of the room, Halster watches it as it drains into the sewers beneath. Where does it all go, he wonders. Will something feed from it or will simply end up in his drinking water, dilute and insubstantial? Crack! The cat of nine tails whips again, slowly from the ground up. We start at the feet of the torturer, boots adorned with spiked iron sabatons. The view moves upward, past the greaves, upwards, ever upwards, past the breastplate, pauldrons and gorget, until we see the torturer himself. With a cold, pitiless look in his eyes. It's Halster Price. It is time now to submit. We have far greater ambitions for you, yes. Yes, for those who endure, there are many expectations. They must serve. Halster whips the cat of nine tails down once more upon the ravaged flesh of his quarry. Halster's head is shaved, and at the base of his skull, a spiral is branded into his skin. You're mine now, forever. Halster turns his head away from the supplicant, eyes focusing on a distant figure that voice still ringing in his head. A bemused smirk falls upon his face, and for a moment, he giggles. <laughs> he once stood against me, will you? A flayed body slashed through the middle, hangs from the ceiling by his feet. His body is carved through completely with spirals. He told me to let the Lady of Graves speak through me, and I did. Will you be her messenger, too? A sharp rat -tat 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 at the door, followed by a voice. And how does my champion progress? Swimmingly, my prince, he may yet be accepted by those who remain, if he can endure. We now see Halster's eyes standing in this room. Something is very funny. I think that's Joe, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That was gross and awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was grossing. Ah, uh, it's just that prose. It draws you in. And that's but then the what is going on? Are you yeah. trying to get between me and Grant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew actually helped edit that scene, so thank you, Matthew. <laughs> In between your lovemaking. <laughs> He's like, Let me, all right, I'll take a look at your script. <laughs> you gotta have in a robe. Thank you, thank you. You gotta have a bite of the apple before you put pen to paper, Joe. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know, and I don't want to know. What part of you is the apple? <laughs> Why would he bite it? <laughs> we come back to Halster's eyes as he stands there still shaking from this fight with the Apostles and Orpiment, a fight that almost killed Atticus and a fight that could have very well killed you. You're all in pretty rough shape. Let's take it to the map. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I was just... There it is. There we go. So in that room right there where uh, Aldo is, that's where you fought these Apostles and Orpiment. That room is clear. There is a door in that room. There is this double set of doors, right? Nya, which uh, lead to that dark room. There's a door here as well, which uh, was obscured by that hallway of blood. No longer obscured. And then, like I said, you already see one door here to the southern hallway. What do you do? Uh, Aldo... Like now, like breathing, he's injured. Everyone is, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm fine. Well, you're okay. Good. Uh, so he stands there and like he's looking around, and he's 
kind of gathered up everything that's interesting in this little room here. And he looks at the door to the east or the, the west. Mm-hmm. And um, he like reaches out and he touches the knob. Then he like pulls his fingers back like, like it was greasy or something. He's just like rubbing it between his fingers. And he crawls out of the little window here. He says, oh, I thought we should go south first. That door doesn't feel right exactly. What door? The one in there. What's wrong with it? I don't know. And he looks at his hand again. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> I don't know. Well, I'm not op- up for opening many doors at the moment. I'm horribly injured. Halster, do you have any, any help within you? Any healing left? I um, seem to be bereft of my powers right now, Atticus. Uh, I'm not able to help us move any further at the moment. He's slowly, well, you're, you're right next to me, so he, he's standing next to you and he just, he puts his paw out, taps you on the side. That, that's okay. You did well, looking up at you. I must say, you did very well. She, she spoke to me, you know. Who did? For asthma. She told me it wasn't your time to pass beyond this realm into hers. She it, spoke to you? Yes. Okay, Halston. It, it was clear as a bell. <laughs> you're, yes, you're very injured. Um, and I think we... You might need some rest. You're right about that much. I am injured, and I could use some rest. Yes, you're, you're bleeding out before my very eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do so appreciate your, your willingness to jump in there. I'm sorry, I don't know what I th- was thinking. I thought they were running away, and I wanted to make sure we knew where they were going, but they turned on me so quickly, and then I blacked out. It was like a bell rung in my head, and then darkness. Thank you all. Seriously, thank you all. While I was down, I... I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm starting to get visions, memories, perhaps, of my past. Something is coming back, so I think if... if we can stay here long enough, we will eventually recover our memories, but... for now... I need some rest. Mrs. O'Lady. I could use some rest as well. Yeah, no, to be honest, I'm bleeding naked. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps... Does that mean you're tired? Yeah. Or bleeding, because you are actually bleeding. No, and I am bleeding. I'm, that was what I meant. I'm bleeding and I'm naked. <laughs> Just wanted no. to save a bit of time. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> well, shall we go back to the chapel? Yes, back to the chapel, and then we can return here. It, it would be wise, I think, to... Well, hold on a moment. This double door here is open, isn't it? Show is. And he said, and you said it was dark in there. Yep. Uh, While well, Atticus has dark vision, so as he's walking by, he's like, well, wait a moment. And he's just going to see if he can peek in from a safe distance. <laughs> Show me on the map. There? There. All right, so the room is dark to begin with. The room where Mrs. Freeling's body uh, was, this sort of day room oh, right. that you're standing in. But you have dark vision and you are able to see everything in that room uh, within your range in that sort of black and white look. But when you look beyond the doors into this room, even with your dark vision, it is pure, impermeable darkness. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> no, 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 no. To the chapel it is! With all haste. And you hear a um, voice. Atticus. Oh, fucking close that door immediately. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Close it. I have, I have some object that I cast light on, right? Because I have an aura of light around my character right sure, now. Sure, you cast it on Atticus and throw him in. <laughs> well, I take that rock or whatever it is and I toss it in the door. Okay, so you t- do you have any dark vision or no? No. But no, but so that light lights up, you know, 20 feet around you, and then it's dim light beyond that. So you t- toss it in. The minute it passes the door frame, 
gets absorbed by the darkness in the room. So it's deeper, Ooh. probably deeper darkness. Yeah, so... Would, if it's deeper darkness for someone who has dark vision, wouldn't that raise it up a step on the, uh, the old darkness chart? I'm not at liberty to discuss that. There Take are, another look, Mrs. O'Lady, Mrs. O'Lady, there are also magical effects in this world that will make the light dark no matter what you do. I think perhaps... Can I roll a knowledge arcana to see if it is possible that even magical light can be defeated to darkness by uh, Yeah, go ahead and roll a knowledge arcana. Uh, that is a 25. Uh, yeah, so you're wondering, in the event, if it was... Good a- start for old Boston Joe! <laughs> Yeah, as long as it's not an attack. If it's like just a knowledge check, you crush him. That's right. That's where we need you the most. So you're asking, like, if it was deeper darkness, you want to specifically focus on that or just try to understand what is happening in there? Well, if it was deeper darkness, would it go up a step from the spell light, for example? Um, and if so, then we know it's not deeper darkness. and something else entirely. If it was deeper darkness, the light level is lowered by two steps. So bright light becomes dim light, normal light becomes darkness. So right. if it was deeper darkness, Atticus should be able to see. Right. No. If it was deeper darkness, even creatures with dark vision cannot right, see. Right, but if you put magical light into it, it should raise and its step. Now it's step, regular darkness. Unless there's something about this specific effect, which means the light won't raise its step. Hmm. <laughs> I think we've got him. <laughs> <laughs> This is exactly what it's like in our home game. <laughs> yes, we have someone that just brings us drinks every four and a yeah, half minutes. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be so like, much better. I, can't, I don't know if we're playing a game or getting bottle service. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think we're playing a game. Yeah, we're <laughs> playing a game. Uh, all right, so I understand what you're saying. In the event that you were to add magical light in there, would it allow you to see? Step up to darkness. Right. So that uh, Atticus at least could see. Um, all right. I'll tell you what you see. All right. You do see what looks like, and again, this it goes in there, and it, it gives you a little sort of glimpse. It looks like an explosion tore the room apart. You see, like, furniture, racks of weapons, restraints, like restraints, that padded restraints that would be used yeah. for, uh, you know... Uh, unruly the really, the really patients. Unruly patients. Uh, glass lamps shattered to pieces and scattered to the corners of the room. Uh, the walls are bare, and the center of the room looks perfectly open. That's what you see. I'll describe this. Does it look singed? Like explosion, like a fire explosion? Or just no, busted, no, torn up, thrown everywhere? Looks like chaos. Something. Yeah, chaos. Some event happened in this room. I don't see anything of particular danger at this moment, but I refuse to step in there. Um, perhaps a rest, and then we can decide. We can talk it over. I'll describe it in further detail back at the chapel. Let us go. Onward. Yes. All right, so you so head, we'll go back to the chapel. You head to the chapel, so you walk back through this hallway that was... Uh, Filled with blood not too long ago, you go back through uh, Administrator Eliage Losandro's room, back through this hallway where uh, you met Ratch Mamby uh, and saw the desiccated remains of poor Jenny, Jenny Two Tails. <laughs> uh, then you go back through the library and you're like, oh shit, we should do some more research in there. Uh, some other show. And then you get to the admissions area and then zippity doo dah through that wall that had that. Uh, blinking eye of fangs on it. Uh, and then you're bippity boo, you're back in the chapel. Back to Praise Log Land. Back to Praise Log. Praise, Praise Log. Oh, May all your logs be smooth. What do you want to do? You want to just take a nap? Winter sees you and she's like, What news? You're still alive. I was hoping the rat would die. Now I have fooled your plans yet again. Ah, <sighs> curse you. This asylum was all my doing. No, uh, she's like, have you found any means of exit or, or any information whatsoever about what is happening here and how we can escape? No, we have no further answers, I'm afraid. We have found some crazy shit, <laughs> but it has not led us to any answers. We just need some rest. Would you please shut up? I'm sorry I shouted. Are you yelling at me? Very emotional. All right. We just need some rest for the moment. We need to collect our thoughts. 
All right, are you hurt? You look to be very hurt. Yes, I'm horribly damaged. All right, well, good luck. <laughs> I just used my fifth and final channel for the day on this sick cabbage. <laughs> so sorry, but the cabbage was not doing well. I was, I was hit many times in the face with a crowbar. Yes, but the cabbage must live. <laughs> so unfortunately, I will not be able to use any He's of like my... He's like missing teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, please, I beg you. <laughs> but look Any at that pristine cabbage. <laughs> it's lovely. Yes, we are running low on food. Were this cabbage to spoil, we would not eat. So um, is that how they're feeding themselves? They eat like most of the cabbage and then you, and then winter channel. Channel the positive are... energy grows <laughs> cabbage. Yeah, it's a, mi- it's a cabbage miracle. <laughs> it's, it's very enchanting. Actually, that w- wouldn't that work for cannibals too? Like, could you just like, so yeah, eat, like eat like a bit of a guy's leg and then just like channel and then you can you know. <laughs> I mean, some more. You'd I never mean, starve. Why restrict it to cannibals? You could do it with all animals. Uh, yeah, that's true. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Never-ending steakhouse in yeah. the chapel. Never-ending steakhouse. The never-ending yeah. steakhouse. <laughs> da, da, da. Steak every night. Uh. <laughs> the never-ending steakhouse. <laughs> that needs to be a shirt. Uh, <laughs> all right, she's got... I think it would be a take in the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> She, uh, she says, no problem, you're all set. And she just boom, 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 starts uh, healing you all back. And with five channels of 2D6, she's able to get you back to full. Beautiful. Certainly after you rest for the night, which you know you can do safely in this chapel without having any of these nightmares that seem to leave you uh, physically impaired after the nightmares end. You know you're safe in the chapel. So you go to sleep, yeah? Yes. Yeah. yes. All right, you wake up. You got your new level, you got your new powers, you got your new feats. Full HP. Yes. Oh wait, we didn't roll oh. HP. Yes. Oh, oh right! Oh! I just realized I can't We gotta do it live! All right. Do it live! Wait, didn't we have a rule about this that hurts you guys? All right. If we roll rolled the same number, then you each roll again, but using the low, the lower uh, I like dot. You have the option, right? Think, right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's start with uh, Mrs. O'Lady. It's a D8. D8. All right, Matthew. Come on, O'Lady. Seven. Five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mrs. O'Lady, Joe O'Brien. What do you got? There? Come on, Attic. What do you got? D. Uh, D2. Stop it. No. What'd you get? What is Stop it? it. D. D6. D6, okay, hold on. I'll roll a D4. What'd you get? Five bagger. I got a five too. Oh! Wait, no, 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 no. You Looks the, like it's the lower of two D6s. No, you have the option. No, yeah, I'm choosing to take the lower, you're right. <laughs> Wait, are you kidding? No. Oh, God damn it! It's the live rule. Fuck. Six! Six! Oh! Do it again. Let's do it again. (laughs) I'm so devastated by this. You're gonna be great. I used my five and my six for the night. Let's see what you got. Come on, keep it going. Six! Six! Sabers and we're just like ah! <laughs> all the sparking. Let's I hate it, it when my Schwartz gets tangled. <laughs> all right, six, four. Oh, oh I yeah. Get six, right? Really? Wait, Joe, did you just roll six, six, six? Yeah. Oh, oh the market. Hey. Welcome to Boston, <laughs> home of the devil. Oh, Joe, you, you get four. Uh, I don't do you think get? that's a real rule. I'm going to look it up <laughs> on cut YouTube. Cut his mic. Uh, D8. D8. Phenoma! You know where this is going to end up. Uh. Eight. <laughs> Two. Yeah! <laughs> Skid vicious. All right. Seven. On a D8? Yep. Two. Yeah! <laughs> Everyone that mattered won. 
We'll live forever. <laughs> we'll live forever. Uh, good job. That was fun. <laughs> so mad. He wants those extra two hit points so bad. <laughs> Those, that was the, like overtime playoff hockey. <laughs> that was and, awesome. <laughs> uh, all right, so you're healed up, and Winter just impresses upon you, and it pulls you towards the door as she's shuffling you out, and is like, I understand. <laughs> just get out, please, please. You've already ruined our cabbage soup. It's like, please, please. I, I know that you're doing everything you can, but these survivors are not well. The, the children are suffering. Those who we don't have medication for are suffering. We must find a way out. Please do everything you can, as I know you are, uh, to, to help us, for I fear our time is running out. Winter, I can assure you, there is nothing more pressing on our minds. <laughs> Well, oh my God, what is happening? Oh my God. This has, we're going to take a hour. Are those car bombs, bro? Hour break from these. Uh, what'd you say to Winter? I said, Winter, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> no, I say, Winter, we are, I can assure you, we are doing all we can to get out of this place. It is our top priority. All right. It's the number one thing on our to-do list. We're working through this as well as we can, and we're keeping you all in mind. All right. Well, good luck. In the meanwhile, why don't you use my cannibalism slash channeling method? <laughs> Stay in here for months. It really is quite genius. I will consider it. How many Matthews are in there, though? How many vegetarians? <laughs> like, no, I'm sorry, man. No, no, the system doesn't work for us. Save the cabbage. Save the cabbage. <laughs> Save the cabbage. I <laughs> know, oh, the vegetarian. <laughs> We shall eat the vegetarians first. <laughs> <laughs> they contribute nothing to society. <laughs> um, uh, what is this, Portland all of a sudden? I know. <laughs> Fucking Boston. We're Boston. Right. Any vegetarian here flew in today. <laughs> uh, all right. You guys want to go right back to where you were? Oh, all wait. right. Did we, we rested? Yeah, fully rested. So we, we have the, our, we're all diseased, right? Oh, thank you for reminding me. What the fuck? Brown thank noser. Uh, uh, thanks, Professor Skid. <laughs> well. Take that fucking tweed jacket off, asshole. I had it in my notes here, and Skid, I got so excited by the fact that we're uh, live that I forgot to uh, give oh, you wait. your horrible, horrible conditions. You all contracted filth fever. You got the plague, motherfucker. You got the plague, motherfucker! You all contracted filth fever, which is not great. It's a classic sort of early game disease that you're like, well, that's just shitty because it's 1d3 dex damage and 1d3 con damage. Which will affect your overall HP. Let's start with Matthew. Matthew, you got two points of dex damage oh and two points of con damage. Come on, one. I'll save Come Joe for one. the end. Aww. Skid, you got one point of dex damage and one point of con damage. Yeah. Grant, you got three points of dex damage and two points of con damage. Let me get my nice D6 for Joe. You got two points of dex damage. Ooh. What do you think, three points of con? One. Two points of con. Shit. Shit! Con! You guys are in bad shape, and... So uh, how does that work? It works that uh, every day you're going to have to roll this save, and it takes two consecutive saves to cure yourself of fifth fe filth fever. Every time you fail, you're just going to keep draining of this. And it's safe to say that Winter does not have removed disease? She used it on the cabbage. The cabbage was very ill. It was stricken with filth fever. He said, filth fever and chlamydia. <laughs> that took a turn. Yes. My we, we're, we're all very lonely in the, the chapel these days. <laughs> we're allowed to each take the, the cabbage to the janitor's closet once a day. <laughs> and no one asks any questions. <laughs> and I, I used my removed disease on that. No, she does not... Uh, 
It's funny, she does not have removed disease, but she does have purified food and drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why that cabbage got so much, yeah. Got <laughs> she, it. I think this will work. Yeah, no, she, uh, she can't really help you. So, uh, back to the old hallway. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. All right. You know what doors lie before you. There's that door that Aldo touched that felt, what'd you say, greasy? Yeah. Greasy to the touch, and you're like, yeah. I don't like that door. Yeah. There's this door here that you now know has some sort of deeper darkness situation, but you, with dark vision, are able to see into it and see that it looks like it's been ravaged by something. Then, obviously, there's this door here in the hallway, and then the whole way to the south. What do you want to do? Well, I was thinking about uh, the way south looks appealing because of this just this big black open spot here that I think we could probably just close that out, like figure out what's going on in there. Yeah, zoom out uh, the map a little bit, Grant. Just take a look at the whole picture here. It looks like it'll open to the courtyard at some point and we can kind of like figure out where we are a little bit yeah. better. Look at how far we've come. Yeah. Over the course of a year. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're almost on to our second, no, we're even not even almost on to our second map. Um, and what was the treasure that we found, Skid? Opium. <laughs> that was that was the main treasure no, that I remember. It was the friendships we made along the way. Oh no, right, that too. <laughs> Each other. The <laughs> opium. I was more interested in the opium. opium. Yeah. So obviously there is a there is a black spot here that you want to. You're interested in trying to like. Let's close that off. Let's see what information we can figure out there. What about um, this door right here? No, well, that's Ooh. Uh, that's a that's a door, all right. Um, Mrs. O'Lady will check it for traps. All right, roll your perception check. Uh, 20. <laughs> Looks to be just fine, Mrs. O'Lady. Looks to be just fine. Maybe a little too fine. Uh, and then she backs away and lets somebody else open the door. <laughs> I'll door do it, is damn it. I just, Atticus, shut up, I'll do it. Uh, he read my mind. <laughs> Halster will open the door. Yeah. A cat? <laughs> There's a very old, very sick cat in here. Yes. We must euthanize this cat. Euthanize it. <laughs> no, kiss it. <laughs> you open the door and you don't have dark vision, so you can't see anything in. James, if you're, excuse me, Atticus, if you're standing there nearby, you can see into the room what looks like Beds, a long row of beds. Oh. Mrs. O'Lady casts light on a piece of rubble nearby and uh, carries it on her. Okay, you already have the uh, aura there set up. Can you see it on the map? There? Yes, that's why I did it. Yeah, to okay. make the map correct. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for figuring that out an hour into the show. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, you light Atticus it up. Will, sorry, he moves up there, and he'll tell Halster what he sees. Halster mm. casts light on his sword. It's a red row of beds. And you see that there are the, you know, chipped white paint peels from the battered frames of this row of identical beds, and dingy white curtains separate each bed, offering only the illusion of privacy. From where you're standing... You can see that all of the beds have padded manacles and leather restraints affixed to them. This is so messed up. Roll a perception check. Eleven. Twenty-three. Five. Eight. 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 All right, so you're standing there and you're all looking at the, the beds that you can see through the door. Um, and Mrs. O'Lady, you hear. Someone or something is in there. Halster, go check it out. <laughs> go get him, Ray. <laughs> Heart and soul of the Ghostbusters. Um, this all seems... Is there a direction that sound is coming from, right or left? Uh, your left, so to the south. This all seems familiar to me. I, I feel strangely at home here. Let me... Oh, yeah, I bet you go do. Go past the door. Uh, and he enters, and he gets to the edge of the bed. He places his hand against the bed. 
and just steadies himself, looking to the south and says, Is anyone there? You can see a little bit more into the room, but each bed is separated by this sheet, so you oh. can't really see deeper into the room. Aldo Walk right up to the bed. Aldo steps in, too. He stays back, but he, he gets into the room. Yeah, Atticus will step in the doorway. Behind. If you had poor intentions, let them be known before I find you. And he walks. Is the sheet where the edge of that blackness is? <laughs> I have poor intentions. <laughs> <laughs> Define poor. <laughs> I have uh, a copy of Cruel Intentions on DVD. Is that, <laughs> is that what you meant? Does that count? <laughs> it's like a Google autocorrect. <laughs> did, did you mean cruel did intentions? Did you mean... <laughs> Um, is the edge of the curtain, the curtain you mentioned, where the edge of the fog of war is? Uh, yes. Okay, so Halster will get to the edge of oh that fog god. of war. Oh and my we'll god. Just like slowly it. walking down these beds. Oh my god. As you walk down there. Oh no. Oh god. Are you, you just I hear. Wasn't. No. 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 Not again. Keep away. I don't want anything from you. Keep away from me, bastard. From the end of the room. I, um, I know my mother and father. I'm no bastard. And he whips the curtain open. (laughs) You whip the curtain open and you see at the end there a man lying on the bed. (laughs) Disco dancing on a bed. (laughs) Disco dancing. (laughs) He's strapped to the bed, hands and feet, and he's asleep. Just, no, no, stay away, no, no. Uh, Halster will walk directly up to this person, confident now that he's in restraints. We'll do a quick perception check before he does so. Okay. See if there's anything in the way. Uh, Ten, so probably not anything. Ten, no. You approach up to him, and the thrashing and his his anguish increases with every step forward until he's just like, no, 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 and then he's like, He passes out? Yes. Uh, can I do a heel check on him now that I'm next to him at the foot of his bed? Yes. Uh, 12. He doesn't appear to be breathing. Uh, I will expend a use of fervor as a standard action, which I've messed up before, uh, to heal him if he's not breathing. Okay. Well, is, is he alive? You're not sure. Three points of healing. Three points of healing, so you... He like, like you're giving him the, well, yeah, the, the paddles, and, just, and, just, and he just clear. Nothing. No okay. move. Uh, can Atticus see him? Yeah, you guys want to get down there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So could I do uh, perhaps a knowledge arcana? See if there's any signs that he's suffering from a nightmare. Like, sure. The, that sort of spell like ability. Twenty five. Ooh, yeah. Another natty seventeen. <laughs> It. So you heard the voice as well as Halster approached by himself, and you now see this creature lying there. You see him maybe resettling after the uh, the pads from Halster's healing touch, and you see a little yellow vapor. Oh no! Escape from his mouth. Is he also a portal? Right after that happens, all of you watch as this human man starts changing. No, no, no. His skin sallows and starts to fall off in places on his body all at once. Turns from that sickly white coloring that he already had to a dark, Ray, right before your very eyes. His mouth lolls open and you see that his teeth start falling out, oh. except for a few that start to grow long like fangs. His ears start growing up into points. And his hair starts falling out in clumps until finally he looks exactly like that creature that was in the room, manacled to the wall, that oh, was wow. eating the other person oh, manacled God. to the wow. wall. Oh, God. oh my God. And he wakes up and it's just like, 
and tries to bite you, but all of his limbs are restrained to the bed, and he's just thrashing away trying to bite at you. What do you do? And Halster jumps back, fighting Halster. towards Mrs. Old Lady. Put him out of his misery. Is Put it, him to rest. Is it a mercy to kill this thing? Absolutely. Ah, it's like a walking dead kind of moment. Did we ever do a knowledge check on this creature? Uh, he or- did a knowledge arcana, and that's when he saw this yellow vapor, he, you know, kind of come out of his mouth. Well, is there a knowledge check I can do to identify the creature? Uh, yes, yeah, do a knowledge local, I think. No, uh, knowledge religion. Knowledge religion? How sir do you want to? It's the one knowledge I don't have. He's connected. Ah. 23. He's connected to the city of madness. 23, he's turned into a ghoul. A ghoul. Oh, okay. Don't let him touch you, How sir. Don't yeah. let him bite you. They cause paralysis, I've heard. Yes. Yeah, you were bitten by that yeah. one before, and you got, I think you got ghoul fever. Yeah, uh, it's a fever I can't get rid of. Uh, Halster will swing out at this thing in an attempt to euthanize it. Okay. Not a cat, but a ghoul. Uh, 18 to hit. Hits. All right. Okay. That is 10 points of damage. Yeah, and you're able to just put him out of his misery. <laughs> so he's thrashing, trying to bite at you, and you just, you know... Stick your what do you what kind of weapon are you using? Right now it's a plus one short sword. Plus, plus one two. Sword. Red oh, yeah. Destiny. Red Victory? Red Destiny. Red Destiny. You Red just Destiny. Stick it right where you think his heart would be. And he just expires. So the the yellow mist was keeping him was keeping up an illusion or was he did he actually change? If you talk to Halster, what he saw was a human man having some sort of nightmare. No, no, get away from me. Get away from me, you, you bastard. Not this time. This is absolutely ridiculous. Send water is Thank the you. thing we should be drinking. Buddy. Thank you very much. We appreciate them, but you realize we can only drink so much. I, I think I know both who this is ridiculous. ordered these drinks for us and who may place. have been tormenting this poor man. It was the Tatter Man. He thinks it might have been the Tatter Man. You've had dreams. Whenever you fell asleep outside of the chapel, the first dream you ever had was this Tatter Man yeah. coming for you in the mists. No, get away from me. Get away from me, you bastard. He dies, a yellow mist escapes from his lips, and then he's transformed into a ghoul. You've seen ghouls about this place. So Is that we... what happened to them as well? Did they fall victim to these dreams, not unlike this character? There, but for the grace of Phrasmago, I... Are we going to turn into ghouls if we keep having these dreams? I'm afraid so, Mrs. O'Lady. And your voice sounds much deeper now. That was... Are we going to turn into <coughs> ghouls? <laughs> Call the killer. Put her out of her misery. <laughs> Put red destiny in her heart. <laughs> um, can we search the room? Yes. You Wait. search the room, and it looks like most of the useful supplies have already been stripped. Uh, but you do find a straight jacket and a hoodwink cowl. What the hell is that? Hoodwink cowl. Yes, they are both from Occult Adventures. Straight jacket, basically, you can put it on someone and uh, they have to do like a, it's like giving them the grappled condition. They have to can try to do an escape artist to get out of there. And then a hoodwink cowl, I can't remember what it is, but. This uncomfortable mask consists of a black cloth hood, padded leather earmuffs, and shuttered goggles that block vision. A creature wearing a hoodwink cowl is blinded and deaf and it takes a minus 10 penalty on all perception checks. Mm, I, I have a plan. Are you going to wear these things? No, but it is said that Zandalu sees, so perhaps this hoodwink cow could be used to hinder his sight, and I also think that perhaps another treasure that we found, the incense of open thoughts, would allow us to converse with him, saying, seeing as he does not speak, and perhaps the straitjacket can be used to contain him. My yes. suspicion is that Zandalu sees beyond, my friend. But in either case, we should take both. Keep them handy. You never know when a situation might arise that we need them. That's true. We might need to wear them ourselves soon enough. Mm. I have a feeling you're right, Mrs. O'Lady. The mm. cowl in particular. 
Perhaps we don't want to see or hear what is going to happen to us. Mm. I have a feeling that we're going to there are going to be many things coming soon that we won't want to see or hear. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> that was very creepy, Aldo. <laughs> Aldo, um, best to just keep silent. Keep those thoughts in your head. <laughs> Too right. <laughs> Shall we press on southward? Mrs. O'Lady, check the door, see if you hear anything. I listen at the door. 18. You hear everything. <laughs> uh, the whole plot solved. The door. <laughs> um, yeah, silence. Obviously, it appears that it goes, uh, you know, it's just another way to get into the hallway that you were already going down. Oh. I open the door. Well, aren't you cool? <laughs> yeah, and you see the rest of us standing outside. <laughs> so, hey, so, oh, hello. What took you so long? Uh, <laughs> Doppelgangers! <laughs> Starts attacking them. <laughs> you, you open the door, and uh, do all of you go into the hallway there? Yes. 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 Okay. So you go into the hallway. Everybody roll a perception check again. 28. Man, rocks. God damn, rocks. Third level. 17. Ooh. Seven. 12. Uh, so Mrs. O'Lady and Aldo, you hear not very far away from where you are, uh, kind of like a... A scratching. Sound of scraping. Sounds like something... Uh, wet against something hard. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is so much fun. (laughs) This tableau of alcohol is so beautiful. (laughs) I know. know. It's like the Last Supper. (laughs) I know. It's like the Last Supper if it was just wine. <laughs> um, he's like, you know what? I'm not gonna betray you. I'm wasting. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're all right, Jesus. I was gonna, I was you're gonna right. betray. I was gonna betray you. I was totally gonna betray you. But you're, you're okay. <laughs> I was like, there's a piece of silver. Get out of here, man. Maybe it's the car bomb talking, yeah, but I'm on. not gonna betray you. <laughs> I'm not gonna kill you. I was gonna kill you. That's I was crazy. Gonna, I was kill gonna you. have That's you killed. Crazy. Romans were like, what? I'm like, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we should kill Thomas. Let's kill yeah. Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. We'll tell, we'll, yeah, Nobody doesn't cares he, about him. He doesn't even get a gospel that makes it into the no. final version, man. Fuck him. He doubts. He doubts everything. Let's say that he's Jesus. We'll be like, hey, hey, see that guy? That's Jesus. Let's get him. Let's get him. Let's get him. That was the most Boston bit I've ever heard in my life. You're not going to get a more Catholic crowd than Boston. A a bunch of drunk mass holes talking about what if Judas got too drunk to betray Jesus. No, you are. Wait, wait. wait. Got drunk. This is the perfect time for Matthew to unveil the joke he workshopped with me and then told to you and Joe. Yeah, you've been working on some material. It's just really not great. Matthew, <laughs> what you got? Tell him. Tell, you want to hear right, a really? Right, 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 right. Joke, open. joke, 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 joke. A quick, quick open mic. It's so bad. Tell me, tell me if you heard this one before. <laughs> so let's say you're driving up to Massachusetts to see Glass Cannon <laughs> live. <laughs> And you're also Catholic, and you want to go stop in and, you know, have some, you know, some time. And so you go to Mass in Massachusetts. Do you say you're going to Mass Mass? Right? Boo! <laughs> mass Square? Is Boo! it Mass Square? <laughs> so bad. <laughs> He's trying to work out new material on the road. I'm just trying out new material. <laughs> mass, mass. Uh, We're going to make it a thing. Mass squared. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to throw a tomato at you. Yeah. A cabbage. You hear scraping. Grass. Scrape, scrape, okay. scrape. Wet scrape. on hard. And here we are again. Would, um, uh, this might be a stretch, but would a knowledge engineering help at all? Could it possibly be something being worked on? A machine of some kind? No. Okay. 
Where is it coming from? Ahead of us? Just... It's coming from ahead of you in the dark. Now, James, you can probably see a little further than where their light goes. I'm, I keep saying James. It's cause okay. I'm, I'm so Because she wants to be Mrs. O'Lady still. I look at you as still James, but you're Atticus. You're Atticus Grimm, as far as you know. As far as I know. Not um, a James. But yes, you can see farther, right? James. Further, farther. We, we, we were always friends. friends. From our childhood days. days. Nobody? Nobody. No. What are Billy you talking Joel, about? come on! What? It's a it's a deep Billy Joel B side. Oh man. fuck Billy Joel. I hate Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> He's more he of an MSG guy than a It's true. Yeah. He's no Aerosmith! Yeah! <laughs> Shameless. Uh all right, so Aerosmith is answer terrible. my question, dummy. Can you see further than their light? Uh yeah, a lot further. Okay. So, Three times. So um, what you see is that the hallway opens up. Actually, two hallways sort of meet under okay. a lofty ceiling. The ceiling opens up about you know, 25, 30 feet ahead of you. Uh, and you can see high windows. Not unlike the day room. Okay. To the east. With that nauseating looking fog beyond. Okay. It gives the space an airy feel, but it looks like the western wall has collapsed and there's a ton of rubble there. You can feel cool air rushing in towards you all. And you also start to hear the scratching once Mrs. O'Lady and Aldo pointed out to you. It's coming from where that rubble is. Let me Aldo, you, Aldo's you prodding more. Mrs. O'Lady forward out of pure curiosity. Says, yeah. Come on. Hosta, go. go. I'm, I'm get the just sound. an old lady. Come on. Oh, he's revealed a creature by mistake. Household. There it is. It's not by mistake. I can see its butt. Halster leans around the corner. To, oh, there we go. Oh, no. To see the creature's butt. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, that thing. Oh, uh, we're having fun. We're having a good time. Praise, praise. Yes, you see a butt. <laughs> and so Halster... Sword first to illuminate the corner. We'll look around the corner, and I'm sure a little bit more gets unveiled. You look there. around the corner, and you see this collapsed wall, and you see a ghoul. Oh. And the ghoul. <laughs> it's just digging away at the rubble, digging so frantically that it appears not to hear any of you. And you can see that it's digging so much that its skin, what skin it had remaining, has been completely ripped off of its hands as it just continues to claw away with its bloody sinews exposed. And it's just... Aldo, It's Aldo. so engrossed in its work, it doesn't see you. Aldo, best friend, come here, please, quickly. What is it, best friend? I think this is a classic bomb-in-the-butt routine. Oh, yes! <laughs> Oh, yes. Could you please throw a bomb at this thing's butt? Slight of hand check. Oh, I've got extra now? I think we call that the Richard Gear. <laughs> Aldo, yeah. do you have a gerbil? UMass! <laughs> UMass Amherst! I actually lived in the dorm with that supposed... Anyway. Uh, all right, so... Uh, Aldo steps forward and throws it right in his butt. Um... Roll for initiative. Whoa! Oh! Yes! All right. Roll for initiative. Let's get into it, huh? Try not to suck. Obviously, you caught him unawares, but still, sticking a bomb in a butt is enough to start a fight. I said, what, what in the butt? What, what in the butt? Aldo, what did you get? Uh, eight. Eight. You're going to get a surprise round, so that's okay, Mrs. O. Two. Two for Mrs. O. How's the price? Fifteen. Fifteen. The price is right. Oh. Atticus. I uh, got myself a good seventeen. Ooh. Respectable. Oh. Respectable. I'm going to go surprise round, and I'm going to let Aldo take that. Do whatever you want to do. All right. I'm going to toss a bomb. Uh, oh, no. That is a miss. No. What'd you roll? What'd you roll? Uh, that Splat is footed. a six. That is a miss. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's see where this bomb lands. 
Uh, and it's going to be a D8 around it, right? Yeah. All Although, right. other, that's solid rubble uh, next to it, so I think it would be... It's going to land right, yeah, right, like, right behind it, right behind its butt. Okay, right so there. it gets a uh, reflex, reflex save. Reflex save half, uh, 11, bro. That is a fail. Beautiful. So that is yeah. seven, seven points of fire damage. Seven now. Yeah, yes. I love it. Yes. Upgrade. I don't like that. Schwa, schwa, schwa. All right, seven points of damage. That's fair. Um, let's go to round one then. It is going to be Atticus's turn. Atticus, you see him throw a bomb. He misses, but you can tell that that splash damage uh, was enough to really hurt him. Um, um, hi, Jale. Shocker. Uh, 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 you always look at your character sheet like it's the first time you've ever looked at your character sheet. Uh, well, it's uh, the first time I've ever looked at this one. Uh, no, I, I will, um, I'm going to delay. Well, give them what they want, Joe. I don't have anything to help anyone right now anyway, so. All right, uh, so. I'd like Halster to take care of it. Atticus delays, and it is Halster's turn. Halster will march directly up to this butt bomber and take a swing. Take a swing at the butt bomber. Swing, bada, 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 18 to hit. Hey. Yep. That's why waste a spell. 11 points of damage. And he did. Yeah. Oh. In my business, we call that a strategic delay. <laughs> no spells wasted. Problem taken care of. Yes, Atticus saved the day again. You're a brilliant tactician, Joe. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I think it was the Guinness that helped me get there. But the, the, the ghoul was no match for you, even though it was not restrained like the poor creature. In the room you were just in, you were able to make short work of this creature that is just clawing away at this rubble. I think I see it. I think I see it, my friends. I, you feel I, the cool air coming through. I, I know what's happening. Crossbow Jacksman and his crack crossbowmen have been keeping them at bay for all this time. But if Zandalus's forces can find a way to dig through this wall, they will have another pass of entry to the temple. We have to stop them. Is Crossbow Jackson, are they all still there? Are they still manning the barricades? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Day and night. You would dare impugn Crossbow Jackson's commitment? No, no I never <laughs> would dare. I have a vote of no confidence in Crossbow Jackson's <laughs> leadership. Leadership. No, but, but Crossbow knows. Uh, <laughs> just to be sure, can I detect psychic significance on the rubble? See if maybe there are any items in there buried? Yes. Ugh, you feel like if you had two points in your phrenic pool. This is a different thing. You would this be able a different to figure thing. this out. I know, but I make all the rules. <laughs> and you don't detect any psychic significance. Troy, is it all right if we zoom out on the map a bit to show where it connects to? Because we got some un unveiled territory down there. Metagaming. I, I appreciate you asking. No. Why okay. would you ask? Yes, of course. Okay, let's see. Show me so what you got. So we went down the hallway before. Oh, yes. It was in that room we went outside to the yellow fog mm. down here. So it's either trying to get into the inner courtyard or down into that hallway. Yeah. Yeah, you've been down that hallway when you were exploring the admissions area. You went there and you went up there and realized that it just ended in uh, rubble. Wow. But now, okay. now my computer's dead and the show's over. Let's, let's no, push on. But you have, uh, you have some rooms here. Just decide what you want to do slowly while my computer reboots. <laughs> let's push on with all haste. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Everything looks clear. I the, found a huge trove of treasure. <laughs> there's another flashback. You see, oh, your computer shut down because there was a problem. Uh, oh, curious, Apple. Oh, uh, yeah. That's definitely Apple's fault. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Anyways, uh, four doors. Four doors, bro. Four doors. Four doors, bro. You see four doors, kid? Uh, what do right. you do? Mrs. O'Lady. Go. Uh, Mrs. O'Lady goes to the first door. Oh, let me tell you about that first door. Oh, man. <laughs> that for I can't believe you went to the first door. Well, of all the doors to go to, skid. The, the first door? I could, I could have gone to the second one. 
I would have thought you would have went straight to the second one, but you, no. You, he could have gone to the third one. You went right to that first one. Yeah, but one. then there's right. also the fourth. Well, oh, you the fourth s- has its charms. You son of a bitch. Let me tell you about that door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got it. No. Right. I roll perception to check for traps. Yes, do that a few times. <laughs> uh, I get, I uh, carry the 124. Fucking computer. Oh, man, if you had rolled a 23, yeah. then things would have been totally different. But that 24, you see every line in that door. Clearly a craftsman created this door with the utmost precision. <laughs> Let me tell you guys something. But there are no traps. This guy's a real son of a bitch, but he was very excited to come home tonight. So thank you guys for giving us such a great show. He, he deserves it. I'm coming home. You open the door and you see this. Human-shaped carnage covers the bed. You see what clearly was some sort of person that has been absolutely torn apart. Halsters just puking in the corner. (laughs) New guy in the corner puking his guts out. (laughs) It's all right. You're not human. Shake it off. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God. All right. Oh, Something tells me every room works. is like this. Um, I will torture chambers. Does and do I? Nothing else seems to be alive in there. No, man. Uh, I'll. I will cautiously step in, and kind of do a heel check on the. Uh, you walk in the door. Yeah, I thought this was gonna happen. And nothing. Nothing's happens. gonna happen. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do a heel check on it. It's great. Eight. It's dead. <laughs> it looks like it's been like torn apart by multiple creatures. A pot. A pot. Torn apart. It was torn apart. You're tearing me apart. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Next. multiple creatures that just look like they took delight in whatever they did here. Uh, it's horrible. Okay. It's just horrible. Uh, nothing else in the room? Uh, no. Does it look like a cell, like a, or a torture chamber, perhaps? It looks like a, like just a room for a patient to convalesce in. All right. There's a bed, there's a small table, and uh, it's not particularly comfortable. So, but this is a, a private certain, room, t- distinguished from the, the 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 last room we were in, where with all were, the beds and the chains. beds are separated yeah, by sheets. Yeah, it's a private room, but you don't know if it was there because uh, they wanted to make them comfortable or because it, they needed to be solitary. And there's yeah. th- there's no like placards in front of each door that says what they were for or anything like that, right? You surely would have told us that. Um, yeah, surely would have. Well, there's no manacles, right? Uh, no, what you have, don't forget, you have papers that you found along the way. Okay. Can we cross-reference those now? Yeah. Are there any papers that pertain to desiccated patients? Any, 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 any this business patient This patient suffers from constant desiccation. <laughs> We've Cro- t- chronic and persistent desiccation. Yes. <laughs> Suggested treatment, drink more water. He's under, <laughs> he's under 24-hour watch, but he can't help tearing himself apart while he sleeps. Um, yeah, the door, the, the name on this door has been completely scratched out oh, by sh- something yeah. sharp. Okay, great. I'm glad I asked. So well, let's look at the door before we go in next time. Okay. Okay. All right. I can't tell if Grant was throwing shade at me or not. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just so happy to be in Well, Mrs. O'Lady, you're, you're outside again. You're looking at the next door. Yeah. Shall we push on? Check yeah. for tra- check You want to look at the plate on that door, bro? The, what, yeah. What does it say? Did you, did you just call me bro? Yeah, dude. I think this is a big step for us. <laughs> We're bros. <laughs> Love triangle. Yeah, How dare you? What does the plate say? It says Brenton and Debus's room. Brendan, is Brendan the name of... Uh, Brenton? The, the child, we have a missing child. Hold on, I'll think about this myself. <laughs> Brenton. I think yes. that's right. Brenton and Debus. Who's Debus? Uh, can we look through the files that we've yes, carried, sure decided can. to carry with us, clearly? 
Yes, well, you remember, you, you found the files uh, early on, and you were hoping to find out information about yourself, but... Uh, we learned nothing. But you learned nothing. However, you do have files on everyone in there. You didn't find anything on Zandalus. You saw that those pages were ripped out, and then eventually found those ripped out pages in a safe behind the painting, I think. Anyways, if you look up about Brenton and Debus, you see uh, Brentus and De- Brenton and Debus Leakland were brothers who witnessed their parents being slaughtered by bandits near Hyannis. Hi- what? what? Hyannis put? <laughs> by the airport? Yep. Oh my by God. The airport? <laughs> oh, that's horrible. That happened to my cousin. Oh my God. Yep. They were originally from Barnstable. <laughs> <laughs> they moved to Hyannis and they saw oh, no. their parents get killed. <laughs> ba- Barnstable boys are like, Ma! Ma! Don't get killed! I told him, don't go to Barnstable, don't go to Bond, don't go to any of those towns by the canal. <laughs> That's true. They were from Hyannis. They shared this room. Local authorities brought the obviously traumatized siblings to Briarstone uh, to like keep them here, to watch them after they witnessed this uh, while they attempted to track down relatives. It looks like this was seven months ago. Um, I open the door. Heedlessly. Heedlessly. Oh my God. Recklessly. Look at our setup right here. Mrs. O'Lady, Atticus, the front line. Of yeah. <laughs> House are way in the back. It's great. Perfect. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> play smart. <laughs> I'm not dead. Sm- you gotta play smart, bro. You gotta play smart, bro. You see the room. Um... If you continue to read on, like, about doctors' notes that they left on the, the uh, Leakland brothers, uh, you can see that while they were both equally scarred by the tragedy, their recoveries have not been so similar. Brenton has become bookish, and while quiet, is recovering normally, in his doctor's estimation. <laughs> Debus, however, has become withdrawn and suffers regular night terrors wherein he repeatedly witnesses his parents' murder over and over again. Mm. As soon as I heard Brenton being bookish, I pictured him taking off his glasses and letting down his ponytail for the first time. Um, wow. She's all that. There Debus goes. <laughs> there Debus goes again. <laughs> <laughs> and I just can't with the, I, I. That was fun. Um, you had a feeling when you heard the name Brenton and Debus. What were you thinking? I was thinking about the child that is inside of there that's inconsolable because his brother's missing. That's Brenton Leakland, and you get a bottle cap. Yeah! I think Grant stopped his heart. Does anyone have a bottle cap? No! Oh, too bad. You don't get one. Throw him one. You get a bottle cap. Ah, my eye! Do, 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 do. Bottle cap. Nicely done. You know we're human, right? <laughs> we can't. Just, are... we, we may appear undead, but we are human. <laughs> there are a number of charities you could be giving this money to instead of <laughs> just buying these. Drinks. Uh, yes, that was the kid that was crying two times ago when you visited the uh, smile. He's taking a picture. Oh, here it is. No, oh, here. No, you got it. Yeah. Grant, you should have dove. No, ma. Oh, wow. Leave it all on the field. No, ma. Come on, man. Lay no, out ma. for that. Thank you. GCP bottle cap. What are we talking about? Brenton. 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 You that two times ago when you visited the chapel, there was a kid that was inconsolable, and they were like, "Oh, that's Brenton. He's miss. He can't. He's sad because his brother is still missing since the uprising." And we refused to part with our precious opium, right, to help him. And they had to beat him to sleep. We, had, we, we beat did. him to sleep <laughs> over and <laughs> over and over. And over. <laughs> oh, he kept waking up. I think he's beating. asleep. No. Nope. <laughs> Heroes. <laughs> That was Brenton. 
I thought I, I mostly blacked that part out. <laughs> no, no, no. You were blacked out. That's oh, different. Right. <laughs> this is their room. What do you want to do? It looks empty. Search it. You search it thoroughly. Search it thoroughly. Have any evidence of where? Roll a perception check, Matthew. Right. Capital Casa. Roll a perception check. It's a Red Bull Vodka. Ooh. 19. Mm-hmm. Fresh. Uh, I also got a 19. All right. That's fine. You both, at the same time, find something and you, like, lift it up together. And you lock eyes. You... It really never gets old. You think it gets old. <laughs> I am having so much fun right now. Are you gonna drink your Guinness? <laughs> you find go, go those socks. <laughs> Boston <laughs> Joe! Boston Joe! Chuck! 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 <laughs> Don't you need to pee? <laughs> Let me tell you what you find, dummies. You find a pair of carved wooden knights. Oh. In a tangle of sheets at the foot of the southern oh, bed. Oh, right. man. Did, did he have one of them? No, no that, we just found we a found pair of them. pair. Yes. Oh, the pair, sorry. Pair means two. Yes. I'm, I'm done being a good player. Perhaps it was a trio of knights. <laughs> yeah. And you found the missing uh, pair. I'll detect magic. I assume they're not magical. No. Um, these are children's toys or a project they had together, maybe? Perhaps. Perhaps. One night... For each brother. Well, keep it. It might give some comfort to the boy. We'll pocket it. Okay. Uh, and then light the bed on fire and leave. Right. <laughs> go socks. I just like doing like violent things and being like, fucking go socks! <laughs> you'll this is you, why, you'll this, fit right in. <laughs> this is why they have to grease the poles in Philadelphia after a championship because of idiots <laughs> like Joe. <laughs> We two, have a lot of fun. Two doors down, two to go. And get arrested. All right, two doors down. Who opens this one? I'm going to check it for traps. Okay. 27. There we go. No. No oh, traps. Truly not. It's kick not it in. Trap. Yeah. Boom. All right, you are. No, Mrs. O'Lady can't kick in a door. Don't be ridiculous. Ah. Roundhouse to the door. <laughs> Foot goes straight through it. <laughs> Mrs. Lady is a Tai Chi master. No, you gently open the door and you only get it about three quarters of the way open before it oh, no. butts up against something. Oh, throws a bomb at it. And if you, you continue to like push a little bit, you see a foot. Oh. I step away and say, Alistair. It's time to make the donuts. Uh, Alistair will continually he'll lean his shoulder into the door and kind of just like keep on pushing until there's enough for him to squeeze through to the other side. Okay. Whoa. Oh, God. You push through and you see this one's cool. (laughs) Looks like three figures lie dead in the room. They're not moving. Um, I would hope not. Two of them are wearing yellow robes. No, oh, no. Slumped on the floor, having suffered what looks like repeated vicious blows to the face. By that third... Their faces are unrecognizable with blood and like, it looks like they've been stomped in. And does it seem like the third figure at the north did it to them or? Glad you asked, Grant, because the third body is that of an old man, easily in his oh. well, 80s, no. wearing a light cloth dressing gown like he was a patient and he's fallen back across the bed and he's dead as well but he has a satisfied smirk on his face and he still grips a sturdy leather boot with blood on its heel um a halster will inspect the bodies Uh, he'll do a quick perception and he's also going to uh detect magic uh six oh wait hold on yeah 16 16, you don't detect any magic. Um, he'll invite Mrs. O'Lady, who is now the best at knowledge checks ever, into the room. Ever. What am I knowledge checking? I think uh, they were murdered. 
All right. By the guy with the boot. By the guy with the boot. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Will? I, I don't want to, like, pretend like I know things because I watch CSI, but I think... Don't you... S- Recognize a satisfied murderer smirk when you see one. <laughs> is there is there anything on their body? <laughs> Mr. Lay is like case closed. <laughs> Puts on sunglasses, walks out of the room. <laughs> is there anything on Eat the new boss? What? <laughs> I want the Mrs. Lady in sunglasses. I know, I know. Yeah. What? Is there anything on their bodies? Uh no. Okay. The only thing you find in the room that seems to be of any worth is the partner to the, the other boot laying on the floor, not covered in blood. You look at this scene and you think, oh, when the uprising happened and the apostles and orpiments started running wild through the halls, they probably came in here to try and kill this man. And he fought them off. He took two of them out. He wow. took two of them out and died in the process. And was that's why he's smiling. Hell of a boot. Hell of a boot. Is there a name outside yeah. of the door to reference again? No. Also, torn off. Okay. Take the boots. Yeah, the boots leave look the nice. Leave the cannolis. <laughs> uh, you see on the boot itself, it has a uh, signature. It says uh, Angiers. 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 And it sounds very familiar to you, Aldo. Angiers. Uh, and she, I don't, I, Skid does not, this is not familiar to Skid. Roll a knowledge local. Uh, or, yeah, knowledge local. Can I roll it? No. Okay. I'm talking to Skid, Matthew. Uh, sorry. I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> Even though I don't have knowledge local. That's all right, it's fun and it's live. Okay. <laughs> The reason I'm going to let it happen for you is because that name sounds very familiar to you. And then you start, you don't know why you know this, but you know that Angiers is a shop that holds the royal warrant for leatherworking. So these are like nice ass boots. These are some of the finest boots about. These are butlers they are. <laughs> Where I think I'm using that right, I'm not sure. <laughs> right in and let me know. Quite spectacular, really. If they hold a, a royal leather warrant, what royalty provided them? There must be fealty to them. They must be localized to a place. Perhaps the knowledge and ability would serve. I don't got that shit. <laughs> Halster says. But I do, you ignorant slut. (laughs) (laughs) I was so close to a spit take. (laughs) What'd you get? Uh, Joey, Joey's wasted. (laughs) Very, very, very drunk. Uh, no, I got a, I got a sixteen. Sixteen. You've yes. never heard, never heard of Angiers. You don't know what uh, court it would belong to. Okay. At this point, you just feel confident that these are you could valuable. Fetch a nice price for them. Yes. Um, can I do an appraise? I have yeah, appraise. Sure. Yes. Ooh. You can do that. I well. will app- Ooh, How about an appraise? Appraise. 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 I will appraise you. Uh, like Twenty-three. I hey, well done. Alan. 23 a price. Probably could, if cleaned of the blood, yeah. they could probably fetch up to 200 gold Ooh. pieces wow. from a buyer. Uh, it would be a bear to get this blood you out. You could sell those boots for two, three and a gold. Two, three and a gold. All right. Uh, one more room. Let's go to the last. Let's go. Let's go. Take me to the river. Who wants to open it? Give me a minute. I'm going to see what's happening, what this is. Maybe speak on mic. Is that your Bahama Mama? It's very coconutty. Mm. The pina colada? It's gin and suntan lotion. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Boston thing. You'll like it. It's a Boston thing. <laughs> Is that a culotta? <laughs> yes. What are we doing? Are you uh, opening the... the door. Are you... Uh, listen. Nothing. Open. 
Yes. Harder. Open it. Shagun Gunkaku. Run in with your weapon drawn. Oh no. That's what you see in there. Coal. You see coal. A pile of fucking coal. Yes. They clearly murdered a rockman. Uh, detect. Oh, I yes. can't man. They defeated a strong earth elemental. Yes. They detect the corpse of an earth it's elemental. The only explanation. The rocks start to form together. Roll for initiative. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it, it looks like a portion of the tiled ceiling has given way, allowing these heavy bricks to fall across the bed and floor. Uh, fortunately, it appears. It appears as if no one seemed to be in the room when the collapse occurred. Can we look up past where they collapsed? Yeah, you look up past, and it's just, uh, it looks like a partially exposed uh, uh, floor, uh-huh. and then yellow mist. There's no, there's no like, upper level to this building, right? Uh, you have no reason to believe that there isn't an upper level. In fact, if you... Weren't there stairs if you've in taken, the lobby? If you, I'm talking to Skid. If you take time... <laughs> to like look through the records, which you've probably done off air in your downtime, you know that there was a second level, but this collapse ruined most, if not all of it. So when okay. you look up there, you see a little bit of floor and then it's just exposed to the okay. air. Matthew, you had a question? I was just asking if we, didn't we find sta- collapsed stairs in the lobby? Yes. <laughs> Great. Moving on. Moving, Moving on. on. Uh, could, could I? Would it be crazy for Atticus to climb this little pile and look into the floor above? Just no. to see if there's anything perhaps it's stuffed up there. Nothing up is there. crazy. Do whatever you want. Maybe someone hid something up there that is now conveniently yeah, revealed. Yeah, yeah, look. He looks. So you climb up, you scamper up with your little tiny, gross rat hands, <laughs> and you see something wedged in the uh, crack between the ceiling and a rock. Not buying it. <laughs> You're gonna feel stupid. Because really? Because you find a gold signet ring. Whoa. Ooh. Boston Joe! Boston Joe! <laughs> Boston Joe! Yes! Boston Joe! Yes! <laughs> Holy shit. A man drinks like that, he is going He's to going die. To die. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe tonight. A good place to go, man. You turn the ring over, and you look at it, and you see the holly and hawk emblem of a family. And in that moment, you're just like, transported back to you sitting around a table with a spoon in your hand. And there are some big spoon crab. And you're holding the spoon and showing it to nobles. And you look past the spoon to the woman who is sitting there in finery looking at you and on her hand is a signet ring with the same exact symbol on it. So I knew these people. And then you're brought back. You know that ring. I know this ring. It belongs to the Miller family. It belongs to the Miller family. Of Red Leaf Lake. Of Red Leaf Lake. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. Wait. (laughs) I Bugs bunny them. No. (laughs) Gets me every time. <laughs> Duck season. Duck season. Wabbit season. But why here? Why would they have been here? <laughs> it makes no sense. They're not insane. They weren't committed. Perhaps they have a relative who was. I don't know. Either way, I'm pocketing this and selling sure. it on the black market. Surely, wa- surely if they had one of their relatives committed, they would not give him their signet ring. Certainly not. Someone has hidden this here for a rainy day. But Perhaps. I don't know. We'll take it for now. It's as valuable as the boots. <laughs> We're making out like bandits. Uh, you can appraise it if you want. Uh, I will. I will appraise it like I should. Uh, that is a 20. Uh, no, it's worth 50, 50 gold pieces. Oh, wow. Oh, but that's no small price. You get four of those, you get a pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> You're three rings away from a pair of boots. <laughs> three rings away from a nice pair of boots. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, what's go- if we keep going south, what do we see? We go oh, around let, the corner there. Let me tell you, sister. You see... Scooby Doop Stonehenge. Oh, Stonehenge. As a matter of practical issues, are we playing Stonehenge? Papa do. Sambam bamba dee. All right. You see, who baby? It's darkness. Don't forget, this is all darkness. Obviously, you are still shedding some light. Shedding yeah. some light. Thank you, Joe. Paint peels like scabs from the walls of this spacious chamber. Can't paint just peel like paint peeling? Nope. It has to be like scabs? Not in this place. This place is horrible. Scabs. A bent desk guards a broad hall stretching away to the direction where you're coming from, the north, while curtained frames shroud the room's eastern quarter. This place smells intensely of rubbing alcohol. You see a bunch of curtain frames standing about seven feet tall and five feet wide, dividing off a portion of this room, and they're all at these strange angles, like they've been moved very purposefully. And you see, beyond these sheets, the shadow of a hooded lantern on a stool, and it's lit. <laughs> what? Do you know? Made up. <laughs> they sure uh, are, good buddy. They sure are. Uh, well, Al is going to step in, and even though he does, he just he's so curious, just in the vain hope that there's enough light, he tries to peer through the cracks of these screens that are set up. Hosta, go with him. Go with him. Of course I will. It's my best friend. You Aldo, can... you peer through the cracks and you can see that sure enough, just beyond these sheets is a little lantern sitting on a stool all by itself. <sighs> this little light of mine I'm gonna, gonna let, let it shine. shine. And he pushes one of the, the this curtain away and steps in and takes a good close look at the lantern. Oh fuck! You push. He's a madman. This one of these little things away, right on top of Halston. No. <laughs> no. No. And you stand right next to the candle, and I'm assuming you kind of lean down to really yeah. inspect it. Very, very strange because you, of all people, know exactly how a fire works. And you notice that the faint light coming from the candle doesn't flicker at all. It's weirdly cold and paralyzed. Just a single flame, not. What do you do? Uh. Can I do... So he peers at it and he like gets really close, just looks at it. Can I do a spellcraft or an arcana check to see if I know what's going on here? Yeah. Which is better? Um, whatever your highest one is. Okay. Oh, uh, 23. It feels like something uh, obviously magical is happening, but you don't feel like someone something to create this light. You feel like the residual energy from what has affected this place has caused this to happen. And as you stand there, staring at it and studying it, it just winks out. And as it does, you hear in the room, And James, you just, Jadakus, you turn and you just no! see these little postules emerging from like discarded gauze and they're just like, oh god. And they run at you, roll for initiative. Oh, oh my, my god. god. We're in Boston. Oh no. Get it ready, Skid.
Nicola, rest in peace, good buddy. He had a good run. Nick died had three a and a half weeks ago and in a tragic collapse. <laughs> a tragic Raiders recording. Yes, in a that tragic went, Raiders really, recording. Really yeah. haywire. You hate to see it. Uh, let's start with Aldo. Aldo, what'd you get? Uh, Aldo got a 22. Woo! That initiative is old enough to drink. Yeah. That guy liked it. Mrs. Old Lady. Four. Four. Ah. I don't have any jokes about four. Halster. Twelve. Twelve. That's the age Grant likes them. Oh, whoa. Relax. Scotches. Scotches. Relax. Scotches. It's a joke. About scotch. Yes, he likes... That's what I meant. What did you think I meant, crowd? <laughs> I prefer 18. That's right. Uh, and your character? It's just more of a Boston Joe initiative. Here we go. 20. Whoa! Oh, my God. Atticus! Atticus! Uh. How have we not done that yet? Uh... <laughs> It's round one. Aldo, you're up first. Uh, Let me right. show you what you see, though, because now, well, here's the thing. It's dark. However, you're both Mrs. O'Lady and who else is shedding? Halsta. Halsta. Lit up. Halsta Price. Halsta Price, bro. We see these little things. Ugh. Where is Atticus? Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll put this one right. Yeah. Okay. No, they're both on top of each other. Right there. What do you want to do, Aldo? All right, Aldo is, he's going to, uh, oh, ew, oh, gross, super gross. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, he, oh, oh no. Stop it. Man, that's awful. It's growing. Uh, Looks kind of like a scoop, scoop of raspberry sorbet. Yeah. Oh, it does. <laughs> you put it that way. Mm. It looks like Hitler's yeah. missing testicle. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Uh, that was good. Thank you. That's really that good. good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, he's dead now. We won. Yeah. USA. Yeah. Yeah. USA. 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 <laughs> Mission accomplished. Where? Where is it? Where is it actually? Uh, so stupid. I keep moving it. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, all right, there's one here and there's one yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Aldo is going to throw like peek out between these curtains and toss a bomb at this one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. At the one to the south or the no, the one directly uh, ahead. Nor northwest. The okay. one to the the northwest here. Uh that is a 15 against touch AC. Oh baby, that's a hit. Yeah, baby. Oh yeah it is. Yeah, oh, baby. Oh yeah it is. All right, so that is 12 points of fire damage oh, at this one, and then it's a DC 15 reflex save for the other one. You guys are very powerful. Uh, that is a fail on the reflex save. Yes! Okay. Yes! All right, so that's seven points of damage to the one to the southeast. Holy shit, nice yeah, job, man. Aldo! Aldo! Oh, yeah. Aldo! Boston Joe, what do you got? Boston Joe steps up. Fucking <laughs> water. Eyes it up. Color spray. Ooh. Bam. Both Ooh. targets. Pow, pow. Okay. So, uh, will save. Will save. All right, Joe. Four and a 13. Both fail. Yeah. I don't know what their uh, HD is. Uh, why did you just tell me what their HD is? Why don't you just tell me what their HD is? Uh, brown eyed girl. Uh, it is. They are. Oh, just tell me. Stop it. You have it memorized. I'm sure you prepared, right? Make Seinfeld reference. No. Uh, <laughs> what, what? How many HD do you want? How many HD do you want it to be? I want it to be two HD or less. Okay. No. Yeah, it's two HD. Oh, oh it is. Yes. Uh, both creatures are unconscious, blinded, and stunned for 2d4 rounds. Holy All right. Holy. Well, here's the thing. They're immune. Here's the thing. They're immune to sleep. They're, okay. immune, to, they're immune to stunning. Okay. What else you got? Unconscious? Are they immune to fucking unconscious? <laughs> I didn't hear that, you little list. I feel like that's a sleep effect. It, oh. it, it, does, it doesn't say that. 
Well, nice when heel I, turn. Usually when I sleep, I'm unconscious. <laughs> right. Call, call me old right. fashioned. But every time you're unconscious, you're not asleep. For the 90 minutes of shaking sleep I get every night, I'm uh, usually unconscious. Well, okay. Uh, then what else you got? Maybe blinded? No, they probably have blind sight. They don't have eyes. Do yeah, they, they have blind sight. Right. Your spell does nothing. Moving on. Wait, but did they have... But it did penetrate. So they have minds. Because it was a mind... That's, it was a will save. It's a mind affecting effect, right? Their will save is... Yeah, very it, low. it is mind affecting. It is mind affecting. Are they immune to all mind affecting spells? No. But they're immune to everything your spell does. It everything is, you did was bad and you should be... You should feel bad. No, no. It's not a sleep effect. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Take it up with the judge. No, it's fine. Halster Price. Uh, I'm going to step out of the room. Halster Price. Gently. No I'm one talking cares. to Troy, Joe. Yes. Tiptoe out very slowly. Halster will... Good uh, luck, all. <laughs> I will see you in the hallway when this is done. Halster will slap his chest and say, The spiral never ends, and swift action casts divine favor on himself. Woo! With the expenditure of a fervor, and then he will run right up to Hitler's left testicle and swing down a fury like the Third Reich has never seen before. Oh, USA, we're talking an 18, baby, as a roll that's a 27 to hit. Which one is the left testicle? The one right in front of me. The, so the, the right one. Yeah. It's very confusing that I put well, the left testicle. Well, if you look the in right. the mirror, it's flipped, you know? Right, right. Yeah. All right, so this one here. I think that provokes that movement. Oh, it certainly does. I'll take now. the attack. I'm so, I'm fired up. I'm in Boston. Well, let me. <laughs> this boil of a postule just like <laughs> tries to attack you, Natty 18. Oh, he always uh, does it. Dueling 18s. Oh, and man. Of things are gonna happen. First thing that's gonna happen. Master, you got a little cocky. Is you take two points of damage. No big deal, right? And BD. Now I'm gonna need you to roll. Oh man. Oh, this is great. Roll a fortitude save. Pass it. You can fail, do it, Hulster. Fail. You, know you are fortuitous. Fail, fail, fail. I got it in Boston. It's time to spend it in fucking Boston. Yeah. yeah. Good call. Good call. I have Ooh. a seven on one die. Skids die. I have a 16 on the oh, other yeah. die. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! 20. Thank you, Boston. Don't thank them. Thank me. Why? Because uh, I gave them the bottle cap. Uh, all right, you obviously hit it. And how much damage do you do to it? I do 13 or 12 points of damage. Well, here's what happens, good buddy. It you explodes. think you're so smart. It explodes. Yeah, it's gross. gross. It explodes not unlike a remoraz in an ice maze. Oh, no. Death throws. Everybody roll a reflex save. Everyone? Everybody? Oh, no, Everyone? excuse me. Just Mrs. O'Lady and Hauser. And the other one? And the Shut other up, one. Matthew. And the other one. And yes, the other they're one. hurt by their own. No, actually, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it wouldn't affect them it unless affect it was them. unless I rolled really high. Concentrated acid for blood. <laughs> Matthew, give yourself a, uh, a plus one bonus there for the table. Glad you keep this handy. For close encounters. <laughs> I heard that. These are your 13. words. These Fail. are your words. Nineteen. Pass. Shocker. Uh, all right, Matthew, you're gonna take four points of acid damage. Grant, you're gonna take Fine. four points of acid damage as well. You take half uh, as it explodes and shoots acid juice all I, over you. I take four or two? Yes. Four. Okay. Four. <laughs> four as well, all you right. take. Mrs. O'Lady. Uh, Mrs. O'Lady will point her finger at a little piece of rubble and will direct it towards the other one. Uh, telekinetic projectile. Yeah, there you go. Classic. Uh, 17 to hit. That'll do. Four points of damage. Okay, Mrs. O, not too shabby. And then I will step, uh, I will move next to Atticus to get out of range of the explosion. No one cares. It's the Boilborn's turn. Oh, no. Oh, boy. That's so gross. He uh, goes after old Halster Price here. 
Maybe I should get my neon green D20. Oh, there she is. Boylston, bro, man. I'm from Com Ave. <laughs> Natty 15. Oh. That's gonna. Out of the fucking box. <laughs> Out of the box. But I spin it. I'll do it again. I'm gonna get this in. Oh, Jesus. I, only, I got him. It got out of the box. And he, we've talked about this rule. It's gotta be in the box. Yeah. <laughs> That's Natural most... 18. That's gonna that be. That was really, really gross. Yes. Yeah. It's a 22 to hit, Grant. That's a hit. Show is. Let me do this. First for damage. Woo! That's gonna be three points of damage. Roll a fortitude save! Uh. A <laughs> 17. Fuck! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Fuck! Shit on a Pop Tart! I really wanted you to get that. All right, you're fine. Next round, it's Aldo! Casimir. Aldo Casimir like, goes round the south, southern edge, kicks this curtain out of the way, and like, goes as far as it can like, against the far wall. And he's going to throw another bomb right there so you can get the creature in its right. blast no, radius. No, that is a natty 19 to yep. make a Ooh. reflex save, please, shit. It hits, it dies, it explodes. Yes. Roll a reflex save. Uh, 10. Do I roll one? No, you're, you're yeah. far enough away. You fail your reflex save, so you actually take... Ooh, seven points of acid Ooh, damage. Man. Shit. As it just goes yeah, like a pimple. Oh, so pimple gross. full of acid. So oh. gross. And you neutralize this room. You're able to make your way through the East Ward here and discover a couple of things. You discover that this dude up here in the room full of beds was suffering nightmares, not unlike the nightmares that you all suffered at the beginning of this adventure and continued to suffer anytime you rested outside the chapel. In fact, continued to suffer anytime you had a flashback from some traumatic experience during this adventure. That creature then turned into a ghoul before you killed him in cold blood. You then continued down the hallway and took out another ghoul that was just clawing its way through rubble, trying to get out. Has to make you think, like, oh, okay. The apostles and Orpiment took this over. Some of them turned into ghouls. Patients turned into ghouls. Why did this one want to get away from this? Oh, God. You keep moving along, you find a room full of human carnage. You find a room where the brothers stayed find a room with three dead bodies, a patient that fought to the end, and a room with rubble, and then a room full of pimples. <laughs> There's a door to the south here. What do you do? Open it. Should uh, I open it? I'm gonna open it. Aldo's no, no, right no, there. No, I'm too far away. He throws that last bomb, he's like, and he's just like, oh, what's this? And he opens the door. Open oh, the door. Atticus runs, runs close to the house to price. Aldo opens the door and feels a waft of warm, moist air. That's a great sign. Because it leads to a path outside. Oh. A path that looks vaguely familiar because you remember seeing this path from the window of the room oh. where that taxidermic bird haunt lifted you up and slammed you into the ground. You see a pathway that leads back around. What do you do? Is it worth searching this room? There's a desk I see. Is like, might we? You asking me or you asking your Let's search partners? the room. Let's search the room. I was asking you, Troy. Else, take I'll, 20. I'll, I'll take 20 on the take room. Take 20. Take 20 on the room. Now. Okay. No, All right. it's not worth it. Now. Let's go back north. Let's go back north. There's still a door here to the west. I to don't the... care about that door. I want to go. That's Kick it in. Clearly just rubble. 
If you try to open that door, it just like barely opens into more rubble. Aldo right. just in goes. In fact, I can just show you that's what it would open into. Okay. Oh. Okay. So like you, this makes sense. Anyone who took the time, if you're taking 20, does any of you have knowledge engineering? Yes. Or dungeoneering even? You Obviously. would see that like, okay, so this is where the, this would have led Batten to admitting. You're starting to connect the dots, as it were. What about over here? Where does this go? It goes straight to hell. Oh, it's just a wall. It's a wall. Yeah, it's just a wall. All right, yeah, back north. To the north. To the you north said. Go. Yes, there are two doors. There's a door here. Actually, three doors. There's a door here, and then there's that dark room. And then there's that door. What do you want to do? Is that dark room calling to you? Sorry. You are the fucking worst. <laughs> I think but yeah, it's totally calling to me. I thought so. <laughs> Gotta admit. What do you think? Dark room. Open it. Dark room. Cast some light and let's charge in. In a dark room with white Uh, curtains. Mrs. O'Lady, could you once again throw a pebble in there, some such? Blah! Lit up. (laughs) Wah! Mrs. O'Lady throws a pebble. But still, you guys can't see anything. Only Atticus can see in there. Only Atticus can see the 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 shape of this room that has a door to the west. As much as I hate this, I feel like it's only, it's only, it only makes sense for me to walk in first. Set of double doors to the north. So he's going to step into the room. Follow me. Aldo like grabs him by the tail and like follows him in. Yes, that works. Mrs. O'Lady grabs Aldo by the hand and follows him in. How so grabs Mrs. O'Lady's pension? And runs back to the chapel. <laughs> yeah. We gotta be rich. <laughs> we do a conga line into the room. So you move into the room, and again, there is some sort of supernatural darkness in here. And he's describing it, everything that he sees. Everything that he sees. You all walk in, and you're looking around, and you just hear. <laughs> as the door shuts behind you. Oh, oh shit. No. Oh. And then you just hear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello? Who might Atticus, roll a perception check. This is never good when it's important. Uh, 15. You see something out of the corner of your eye reach out low to the ground and just touch you. No, come on. 22 against touch AC. Let me know if that's a hit. What is the something I see? Let me know if that's a hit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a gentleman's hit. Awesome. A little bony hand, like low, low to the ground, just comes out and and touches you. (laughs) Echoing through your mind. It touches you and you feel yourself touch. You don't feel hurt by it per se, but you feel affected by whatever just touched you. And you turn and you look and you just see a small little skeleton covered in the drawings of a child. Oh. Divas. And it looks at you and it says, in your voice, (gasps) you are nothing. You are no one. And we'll see you in Philly. Oh! Oh!